what did Nala say to Simba during the stampede? Mufasa. There's a little Disney joke for you guys to start the video. But this video is about Universal and its new expansion called Epic Universe. And after doing some research and hearing about it, starting to kind of make Disney look like a joke. And they better do some big things to, to come back because right now, Universal is looking pretty strong. <laughs> We are back today. We are talking about the new expansion with Universal, Epic Universe, and we're here with uh, Jason. What's up, man? What's up? Glad to be here. Uh, and you and I are part of the same travel agency. And um, I'm, I mean, you, you've been there longer than me. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Like, I'm loving it, man. I'm yeah. Um, it. You say I've been there longer. I've only been there like maybe not even a year longer. So it's it's. So you're still fairly new too. Well, I was I was with a different agency for oh, six oh, wow. years, and then I came over to Magical Travel. So, yeah, I'm right. still getting to know everybody and everything. Okay, so you're liking your home here now, Magical Travel? Oh, for sure. Yeah, um, but people are really cool, man. Everybody I've encountered so far has been awesome. Yeah, it's everybody's knowledgeable. Everybody has their own little place that they they know um, and have been able to talk to. So. Whereas the other agency I was with, it's, I, I knew everybody knew stuff, but I was a lot of the info going out. So I uh, posted on the Facebook page and everything and it was fun. I enjoyed everybody. I still talk to everybody in that agency. Um, oh, nice. Okay. But, and I left on, on good terms, just wanted to be more Disney focused and universal focused. So that's why I came to magical travel. Yeah, when my wife and I chose agencies, we had three to choose from, and one was super small, I think, just starting out, 15, 20 agents. Magical Travels right in the middle, and then we had another one that was pretty big, 1,000 agents, more money to start up, and this, this was a great fit, man. Everybody's been so cool. Yeah, this the one I came from was like 20, 20 or so people so it was it was small um yeah they were growing as i went but it was it was nice i do kind of miss that because i knew who was going to be at all of our training stuff and knew what to expect from them but i'm only done the second training with magical travel this summer so it was or this spring so it's still getting to know a lot of people and them getting to know my awkwardness that's my number one thing that i'm trying to do man i'm trying to meet people I'm a huge like network guy. I just love this talking with people, hanging out, talking about stuff that I enjoy, you know, and uh, it's fun. So um, Universal is going crazy right now. You just got back uh, yeah. from, from the training. I'm super jealous. We just had a baby. So um, we wanted to go. I tried to I tried to convince the wife to go, but, you know, nine month old kid. Um, Kind of, it's kind of tough. Next time we're gonna make it though, for sure. Um, yeah, it, how was it's that? a good one. Um, you know, just the getting to I mean, even if you even if you've been to the parks, it's good just sit around and, and talk to everybody. That was the the part I enjoyed. I know a lot about what's going on, and there were questions thrown at me during training um, for our Halloween Horror Nights because I was one of the more experienced people there, um, and then it turned around at night and just everybody relaxed chilled at the bar you know it was just fun and that's that's what, what i really like about it you know the the park's fun having the training's fun but it's the social interaction that that really enjoys absolutely you get around a bar a few drinks with some colleagues have some fun man that's yeah you can't beat that you can't beat that um and i was watching everybody post stuff every day and i'm like oh, i don't want yeah. to be there so bad because we just got back from Four nights last year, we did uh, Mickey's Not So Scary paired up with um, 
the uh, you know Horror Nights and man, we're gonna buy the uh, Express though this time. Uh, the amount of lines we waited in was the lines are crazy at Horror yeah. Nights. Absolutely get, crazy. Um, we went. I've done. I was actually talking to my friend about it today. Um, the only year I haven't done all ten houses in one night was a year I went solo, and I did two nights. So I did five five in one night, five the next night. Um, okay. But every other year I've done all ten, and we we yeah. couldn't do it. We tried. We tried. Some of the lines we waited, and we're just one line was two and a half hours for the newer some of the newer houses. Might have been the time we went to because I took a picture. It's on our uh, my wife's Instagram where it's a sea of people. I mean, like it took us forever to get into the park. It was it was rough, but um, we're doing it again. So <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be a good year. The spec map came. One of the spec map maps came out yesterday, and um, from what I'm seeing in the rumors, I'm I'm really thrilled about what's going to happen. So some um, cool houses coming. Busters. Uh, supposedly Ooh. Ghostbusters 2, uh, okay. Quiet Place, some stuff well, like that. Black so, Phone yeah. was my favorite that yeah. we did last year. Black Phone was sick. The movie was awesome. And I uh, love Black that. Phone was two years ago. Was it two years ago? Oh, well, then I didn't go last year. Oh, yeah, we had the baby. That yeah. was uh, yeah, two years ago. Sorry, that's when we went two years ago, not last year. But Black Phone, that was the first. I like the house setup for uh, when they do Fast and Furious. Uh, being able to split the house into into two separate houses if they wanted to, or if they just want to do one house, like last year it was Chucky. Um, but doing yeah. well, is Black Phone and Freaky was Freaky. the house that year. So, and I enjoyed it. You went through Freaky, had that nice little break, and then went through Black Phone. So, so just you know, this is our our first uh, conversation ever. So I, I want to get. Uh, to to know kind of where your mind's at with Universal a little bit, I'm gonna ask you uh, first. What's your favorite Universal or Islands of Adventure ride? So that's that's a fun one. Uh, that was one that came up a lot down there. Okay. Uh, at the training was. If you ask me what my favorite roller coaster in Universal or in Orlando, it's going to be Velocicoaster. Coaster. But if you ask me my favorite ride, I'm an ET stan. Um, I will go ride ET every time. Um, those HHN nights where I go in for stay and scream, I usually run straight to um, ET for, uh, for a ride right quick and then go into my little stay and scream area. That's my wife's favorite ride. It's ET. It's great. She loves cheesy, it. cheesy and great, but it's the last original. So they, they can't, they cannot get rid of that. They'll be a riot. I think um, the the big rumor, even the the cat, the team members over at Universal talk about it. Um, they can't get rid of it because if they do, Steven Spielberg will probably pull out of the uh, the theme park stuff. He gets so pissed. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I Velocity Coaster. I I have never. I have I haven't yet to ride anything close to to that. I've been to. At least the East Coast, I've been to every major amusement park up and down the East Coast. And Velocity Coaster is just on a whole another level, man. Oh my god, that thing is insane. I haven't uh, haven't been up your way for coasters. Uh the uh bush gardens and uh, not uh, not knots, but all that stuff up that way. Uh King's Island, King's Dominion. But we went all the way to Branson to ride uh Time Traveler when it first yeah, opened. Not- and it was great. Um, and Velocicoaster doesn't compare like that. We're getting a, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but uh, we're getting a thing, a ride at Universal that's kind of like it with the free spinningness. Um, so that's the fun part is is just not knowing which way you're right? going to Werewolf, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's um, looking at some of the information I've seen online is um, some of the everything's shifting from your standard roller coaster. It's, it's not, it's not the same anymore. And, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm so for that. My first time riding Velocity Coaster when you hit that second, that second, uh, boost, man, when you're going through those, these are mag strips. Yeah. You're the, going through that, man. Yeah, 40 yeah. To or something like that. You can't like <laughs> it's yeah, you go 40 to uh, 60 to 70 in that 
spot, I think. I think the first launch is zero to 60, and then you jump to 70 at the second. And if you get on at the right time, it says up to 80. Oh, so that's better. it's a great little little jump on that last one. Yeah, my, I wish I could ride that over again for the first time. That was the positive of the training was the VIP tour of yeah, man, being I, able. I rode yeah. it twice back to back. So, Did the rest of the crew ride or did you have anybody like, eh, no, I can't ride Velocicoaster? We had a lot ride it, but we had a lot less ride it the second time. Yeah, my wife's uh, um, typically one and done for, for a little bit. Then she'll be back on it. But we we love that coaster. And then um, Haggard's Man, again, I mean, I, I was really upset. I was a huge uh, Dueling Dragons um, fan. And when I was a kid, it used to be where they actually rode simultaneously and you'd race the other roller coaster or whatever. And it's been years since they did that. Uh, they just launched it whenever they felt like launching it and they quit racing them a long time ago but when i went one year and it was being torn down i was really really mad i was mad but now i'm really happy i uh i never got to ride it uh we we started going universal in 2011 uh we history wise universal wasn't my favorite park up until i started going to hhn and really enjoying understanding what's going on with um the two parks uh somebody in our facebook group actually said it today was uh it's like comparing mcdonald's and burger king they sell the same thing but they're yeah. not the same so universal really has grown on me in the past few years so when dueling was open we weren't going to that we did harry potter and then we ran out um uh, to go back to the the disney parks right yeah we um actually waited Opening day for Harry Potter, my wife and I. Oh wow! When we first met, and was that? Uh, it was not planned. We didn't even know it. We just happened to be there, opening day, and we were like, "Oh, sick! Let's let's wait." We waited for hours and hours and hours to get in. So that was a um, Hogsmeade. Yes. When that one opened. So yeah, the the yeah. infamous picture of the line going across the bridge in front of the arches. We were part of that. Provided. Probably look close. Awesome. Went like this, you could probably see us. But that's a ride that breaks my heart now, man, is, is I can no longer ride that. Uh, they need to update the screens or something that ride. I just can't. Uh, I just I just can't do that one anymore, man. I think age is getting to me. I wish I could, but I barely make it out of that every time now. I would almost think now that they've announced that there's going to be a new TV series based on everything that and the, those are coming up on. Uh, well, Hog, Hogsmeade's over 10 years old. Oh yeah, and yeah, yeah. Diagon Alley turns ten this year, so I would think they would start probably looking at who they're going to replace with the original cast if they can go in and redo that, all those sequences to make it look up to date with what uh, HBO is going to do. Don't know anything, but that would be the smart move if, if it's successful. That way, it can continue to live on for another ten years. Yeah, you gotta keep up with that because that's really up until Epic Universe is done. I mean, that's that's the that really brought a lot of people. Well, I mean, and you're epic building a whole new Harry Potter line itself. So right. Now that's what I'm most pumped for. <laughs> yeah. That, I'm, I'm most pumped for, man. I won't say I'm most pumped about it. I'm excited for it. I love Harry Potter, but it's, it's going to be weird because you're so far out of all those filming. So all the uh, principal actors are either dying or aged. I think weirdly. what I've seen was, um, I, I saw this in another video where they said it's supposed to be from the uh, second Fantastic Beast film. Well, the land is supposed to be based on that. Right. Because um, the ride is based on the Ministry of Magic, uh, right? The British Ministry. And you're, um, if I understood it right, it's taking, taking place during the trial of um, Umbridge. Umbridge? Oh, really? So okay. You're going to be going in and out on the elevator system. That's like cool. That. It's supposed to be a whole new ride system. Um, somewhat. It's going. To, the The rumors are it's like the scoop and the transformer. Uh, what rescue? Uh, Havoc. Rescue, okay. Um, or whatever. But it's going to be like that ride system. Uh, it was going to be a fully new system altogether, and then budgets and COVID and all that jazz brought it down to this. Let's use something we already have. Right. Okay. Right. That's cool. Well, man, I mean, you can 
these lands are going to be so immersive. Oh, for sure. Crazy. They all spawn from Celestial Park, right? You walk into Celestial Park and you kind of get to go whatever direction you kind of. Yeah. It's, to... um, you walk in and they, the uh, president of the, uh, the company, I can't remember his name, just said they're bringing the park back to theme parks. So a lot of green areas, a lot of water. Um, I'm, I'm excited just for Celestial Park. Um, there's not much rides. I mean, you got the um, the racers over there that's going to be like Dueling Dragons, so I'm going to enjoy that. Um, and then a carousel, but mostly food and shopping. But being able to walk around and just have a nice little area to go to, that's, that's going to be nice. No, that's going to be great. Not getting punched in the face as soon as you walk through the door. Yeah. Having a place to chill out. That's that's why, man, when I go to Disney, I, I still, I, I love Disney Springs. I do. I mean, the food, bars, shopping. I could just sit there and not Disney, feel like I'm... Disney Springs was a much needed update because the downtown Disney was absolutely horrible. Um, it was. <laughs> yeah. There, well, was, there were some good places to eat. There were some, some good things to do. But once they expanded it to its current f- footprint, I think we were we got the best deal out of that one. Cause then you go over to Disneyland in California and it's, it's not as good. It's like, Oh, okay. This is it's yeah. about the same thing as what downtown Disney was for us. It was a little strip of a few restaurants and they're, they're up in their game and it's getting better out there. But that's, that's why like I did the, I did a video on moderate resorts and then ranking value resorts. And really, I mean, I'm, I'm 35. How old are you, Jason? Are you uh, 38. In the 30, okay. So we're on the same age. Yeah. Um, my wife and I first started traveling to Disney. I mean, uh, I think she was 18. I was 20. And we could care less what box you put us in. Yeah. What the bed was. We were there for a couple hours anyway. And nothing bothered us. Zero. We weren't nearly as picky. Now we're picky as hell. <laughs> now we're so picky. I want to get some good sleep on a decent bed. I want to wake up with coffee and look at something and not just a bunch of you know, teenagers are running by in sports because it's a cheerleading conference or senior trips or something, you know, Wanna yeah. chill. <laughs> and, and it'll, it'll get back to you though. Cause once it gets to, uh, yeah, I pay for the kid. It's, uh, like, okay, now we got to figure out this all over again. Yeah. We we're the same way we got, we got to a point, um, we were doing a bunch of, um, uh, big trips or well, not big trips, weekend trips. We drive down on Friday, come home on a Sunday. It's been all day and awful parks at Disney. And then we get whatever we could. Oh yeah. When we went for a longer period, we were staying at, you know, contemporary or uh, Saratoga, something where it had a view and was a bigger room, just co- more comfortable. Now if we go down, we have Travis and he's three. So <laughs> we have to pay for his ticket and pay for his food and all that jazz now. So it's like, uh, we're going to go back to staying at Pop Century, which I'm not complaining about. I like Pop. Oh, like Pop Century is great, especially if you have kids. But, See, I, I bought, I bought, um, you know, this is really bad being an agent now, but I mean, I, I bought uh, DVC years ago. And <laughs> the best thing I ever did. Yeah. I, uh, we bought DVC. Oh, what? It was before we got married. We sold it within a year. You did? Uh, yeah, we, we were. It. We, we, loved it. we loved it. We we absolutely enjoyed every minute of it. Um, stay. We stayed at more uh, hotels that way, more the uh, deluxe hotels. But at the end of the day, we only bought a hundred points, and we didn't want to buy more at the time because we were financing. Um, yeah. and we were still going. And the pitch the guy gave us was like, "Well, you're never going to want to stay in a value resort again." And I'm like, "Oh, that's true." I'm still going to do it because I only have a hundred points and I want to come to Disney once a month. So see, we, we bought resale. I didn't care about any of the um, perks of, you know, buying it straight through Disney direct. So we bought it through resale. We bought a 150 point contract 10 years ago. And um, I don't care about the percentage off for food or whatever. Um, now that we have, we got the uh, you know Disney Chase card years ago. Also, we paired it up with that, and it's like okay, that's yeah, that's perfect. Only if you go, let like you said, I mean, you're trying to go, you know, more than once a year, then it's you know, it's good. Um, Disney man, that's one of those things where now 
this is a good uh, way to get into this. How 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 much people's vacations are going to change when Epic Universe is done? Yeah, and that's that's crazy because um, Bob Iger a couple of weeks ago during the earnings call, he was like, "We've been planning this for ten years. We've known about it." And it's like, th- dude, they didn't buy the land but six years ago. So I just love that guy. I yeah, just you, love that guy. So he's much. a great CEO. Well, he was a great CEO. I think his first reign at Disney was great. This one is kind of falling flat. You can blame it on Chapek all you want. The dude's not doing the job that he came in to try to do. Right. Um, the the answers need to be there, and they're not. Um, no. He's doing great things at Disneyland. Getting all that Disneyland forward going is awesome. But he spent too much time and money on political stuff that he had to uh, work on that Chapek, you know, stumbled over. So. Doing all that kind of backtracks what he has to do in Disney World. But bringing copies of, you know, Rise of Resistance, Tron, uh, Ratatouille, all that stuff doesn't equal out to saying, hey, we're going to be competing. This competes with a massive land that's bigger than our massive theme park. That's bigger than the current Universal Resort theme parks combined. So whatever Disney has planned is going to be great. Um, the blue skies they keep throwing out at D 23s is just blue skies. Um, we're seeing movement on stuff of like the animal kingdom expansion, the potential of a Disney, uh, the magic kingdom expansion, right? The villains. Yeah. I don't think they need another theme park at all. Um, they've got enough land around their parks. Yeah. I don't, that I don't they can think answer. Really. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and what they, in my opinion, man, the only thing that, I don't get into Disney like business too much, but what's really kind of annoyed me vacationing there every time is Animal Kingdom. Just looking at that really terrible Dino Land over and over and over again. All this money, you just can't go ahead and get this started. You wait till now when uh, when uh, Epic Universe is like, oh hey, all right, we're we're breaking ground, we're rolling. Oh yeah, by the way, we're gonna get rid of Dino Land. Yeah, by the time Epic opens ago, too, most of the stuff will still be in construction. Yeah, they take forever. And Epic will probably be having their first or second expansion plots for lands opening by the time this stuff opens. So the answer to Epic is not what's they should have already been building this stuff knowing that's what I'm saying. Stuff. Yeah, they waited way too long. Yeah, they and not believe that when COVID hit, they should have just doubled down and said, Okay, this is when we're gonna we gotta get something going, man. As soon as we can open, we're gonna start building. And yeah, and even then, like Universal, they didn't stop with Velocity during COVID. They didn't stop with Epic unit. I mean, they stopped for like a month, I think, on everything. But as soon as they, yeah, <laughs> as soon as they got permission to start rolling again, they started, and that's why we got Velocicoaster soon after COVID. Hit. Um, that's why Epic's opening next year. You know, Disney. They took seven years to build a parking garage for Disney Springs, and it's taken less than seven for <laughs> Epic to be built. I mean, Universal is yeah. knows where their money's at, and they have to have it. Yeah, it's it's um, it's amazing, man. Because Dino Land just depresses me, and we love the ride dinosaur. I mean, we really do. That's it's that's one of those Disney things, man. Where you love the movie, you're gonna, you know, the rides are gonna pull at you a little bit. Overall, the ride probably isn't all that great when you just kind of step back and look at it. But I love the movie, so. and I haven't watched the movie in years. And right, I've been in the ride in maybe three years, so I know it's in worse condition that now than it's ever been. It's bad. Um, I do think I agree with you though. Um, Dino, Dino Land, it needed it needs help. That was you know that was thrown together anyway. Um, it's a carnival. Yeah, um, it's a carnival. It's cheesy. Even when throwing, it was running, it was like, who needs another uh, uh, Triceratops uh, yeah. Dumbo version? You've yeah, got three of them. Right? Um, I think Disney should have uh, instead of expanding Magic Kingdom, while it is the most popular uh, theme park in the world. I think they should put the money back in Hollywood Studios and Animal Kingdom. Um, they put a lot of money into Epcot. They can put some more lands back in World Showcase, but um, you don't have much to do in Hollywood Studios. Bring so back that. Putting bring these sorcerers at. I don't bring that thing back. <laughs> you can put it somewhere else. Don't bring it back to studios. It doesn't fit the nineteen what nineteen thirties. They, they, they do need. Um, they do need something there though. Yeah, it's it's parks. It's like a half day thing. Yeah, as a travel agent, it's the worst thing of like, oh, people want to go to Hollywood Studios. Well, you can ride, you know, four rides and write, watch three shows. And if you do it right, you'll be out of there before lunch. So that's very true. 
And then they, isn't the contract with uh, Aerosmith almost up to with them? I don't know about that. I haven't heard much. Um, I thought I, heard, I read something somewhere that Aerosmith's contract is like they're pretty much going to pull out of out of that when it's done. I know that um, retheme it. the coaster itself is needing help, and that's why it's close again. They re they did some stuff on the coaster. It didn't work the way it needed to work, so they're having to redo it or undo it. I can't remember which one it is. So that's why it's closed again, um, is to look at the maintenance that they did during the big refur refurbishment a couple of years ago. So I, uh, from my own, I was looking at this from my own personal vacationing instead of somebody else's. Um, our normal vacation consists of a seven day, typically five to seven days. So let's call it six. And we always do four days at Disney and two days at Universal. And my wife and I were just talking about, you know, we were, I showed her the video of, there were some good channels out there that got some good um, uh, drone footage of what's going on with the uh, expansion. And, and we were watching it and she's like, man, how are we going to like fit all this in? How many days do we do now at Universal? Because it's not just Epic Universe. I mean, I still want to go to Universal and I was a venture um, yeah. too. Uh, so, you know, our trip is looking to get split down, right down the middle where we at least minimally take one day away from Disney instead of adding another day at the end of our trip. And I think most people will probably do the same thing. Yeah. If you, um, if you go back to what we were talking about earlier with Hog, uh, Harry Potter, ever since Hogsmeade opened, Universal's just been chipping away at what the days are that people spend at Universal. Yeah. It was only half a day to begin with. Now it's a full day, maybe two days. I don't know many people that do Vol Volcano Bay. I enjoy it. I haven't done it since sure. probably 2019, I think, maybe 2018. It's great, and I love it, but it's just not my cup of tea. But I can spend three days easily right now going to Universal and being fine. But as soon as Epic opens, you're talking about, let me go for a week. I'll spend my entire time at Universal and go to Disney, get a park hopper for a day. Yeah, and I need to hit what I want to do because I'm like I told you, I, I'm fine with doing all four parks in one day. I know what I want to hit and I know what I want to ride and I'll pay for, you know, the Tron ILL just to ride Tron. If that's what I have to do or Guardians. Tron. Mm, I don't know. I liked it, but didn't like it at the same time. Yeah, I, I, I said I'd pay for it. I, I ride came to an end and I'm like, damn it. There we go. I paid for it when we went um, in April. I went with the family right before the training at Universal. And the only reason I paid for everybody to do it was because my father-in-law wanted to ride it. So that's what I did. And he he loved it. He thought it was the best thing ever. And I'm like, well, let's get you over to Universal and we'll ride some real roads. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> it's totally different. We, um, we liked it, man. But when we rode Guardians, we were like, totally blown away that I, I wish more rides at disney across all the parks at least at least each park needs some kind of highlight ride like that those those rides that, that ride was crazy it's awesome but in the, in the end of the day for me um tron and guardians well I, I do like guardians i've only ridden it the one time but um they're just upgrades to space mountain at the end of the day it's we took the same idea of, of a black box ride and we either put screen better screens in it if you're looking at what disneyland has made the car move uh side to side like actually spin a little bit spin the backwards long you're sitting on a, a motorcycle and so it's it's not yeah I, like i said i like i like guardians i love it the fact of seven songs being played um it's, it's cool, but yeah, they just it's, need to go ahead and do standby. Well, that's that's the thing. It's like it's cool, but you know, if you want to ride a bike, go ride Hagrid's. Yeah, if you want to uh, have your stomach churn from spinning a little bit, then you know, just go ahead and full send Velocicoaster and you'll, you'll be fine. Yeah, go go eat something big, go big, back. big lunch, <laughs> go ride Velocicoaster. You'll be good. Go sit in the back, you'll be all right. Eat some churros. Uh, do you like churros? Uh, do not. I hate churros. I ate off my first churro, actually, our last trip. We went for Christmas. And really? I was starving. I was separated from my wife and my uh, my mom and my stepdad. 
and I'm running across Magic Kingdom, and I'm like, dude, just let me get this churro. And I put it in the dipping sauce, and I'm like, this is absolutely terrible. <laughs> I chucked it. I chucked uh, it. I'm so stupid buying a damn churro. It's the reason I never bought one. The the whole gut joke with Velocicoaster, I mean, Universal's big at it anyway, is that uh, when people were asking what you're building over there, they always said a churro stand. So the okay. opening day of Velocicoaster, they handed out churros to everybody. Oh, that's awesome. So um, that's just the universal thing. You know, they're building this huge roller coaster that everybody can see them testing. And they're like, what's that? And, oh, oh, it's a churro stand. Well, I was <laughs> go back to Disney. They're staying on stage with the president of the park saying, here's a blue sky idea of what we might do in five years. And no, no earth moves for two. So I think my, my problem I'm having with Disney man is that I grew up like not, not very, my, my family was very poor growing up and we, my mom saved for a long time and we got the VHS tape in the mail. I was probably 10, 11 years old. And we watched it, the Disney, you know, explaining your vacation to you. And we took it and I was just like, man, and that was the only time I went until I was yeah. an adult. And now I'm spending, you know, from my tw- in my twenties, man, I spent years just going universal Disney, universal Disney, because I'm trying to, you know, fill that void of not being able to go when I'm a kid. And now I'm like, you know, I get to go with my daughter and my wife, but man, I'm like, there's like, it's just nostalgic. It's the nostalgia that's, that's drawing me there in universal. I go to have fun. <laughs> yeah. We, um, starting in 2011, that's when me and my wife went, I went three times before that I went two as a kid and once in high school. Um, but in 2011, we've gone every year to, to do Walt Disney world. Um, at least once um, in that time frame, we've been to the parks over 60 times. Right. So, you know, yeah. I'm, and I'm, that's not a brag. That's a, I'm, I'm with you because well, yeah, yeah. Nostalgia, right. it's, we're going to Disney because we want to see the, the flight of passage. Not, it will fly to passage. Yeah. But uh, Peter Pan's flight, big Mickey's feel our magic, all those old rides and attractions that they've had. But we go to Universal because they don't care about those things. You know, yeah, they're not going to tear down E.T. in Florida, but they tore it down in Hollywood so they could put the mummy. You know, they just tore out all of the kids' zone area because it was so outdated. No one, no one batted an eye in Universal's groups. It's like, okay, this needed to be done. So they brought it all in. You tear down Men in Black tomorrow, you're not going to have a huge riot. No one's going to go and chain themselves to the ride. They'll be disappointed. Yes, I'll be happy. <laughs> but I like it. I think it's a fun little ride. I, I'm not saying. I mean, I I like it, but I know that if they tore it down, that something crazy yeah. is going to get put there, and I'm totally for that. Well, it's um, like a uh, ride, but like it, eventually it'll, it'll go. It'll go one the, day. The rumor right now, is Simpsons line. Uh, evidently, that contract comes up in the next couple of years. Uh, they don't want to renew the the Comcast and the parks uh, have said that. We have enough IP ourselves. Why are we paying for other people's IP? Obviously, they want to keep something like Marvel since Marvel is such a big thing in movies. We're going to keep that there. But stuff like Simpsons, I don't know many of the current generation of high schoolers that are watching The Simpsons. So it's not much of a draw. Now, I will go get a Duff beer. I'll get a Duff, uh, the Duff Tober during HHN, which, so I'll be, I'll be mad when that goes. <laughs> But if they said, okay, we're going to, we're going to plow it all down and we're going to make Pokemon cool. You know, that's going to be an awesome little land. So yeah, and that's uh, the difference I'm, I'm between a Disney fan and a universal fan. The initial, um, back to the future. That's where back to the future was. Yep. And, and I, I love that. I've only been on the Simpsons ride once and albeit it was kind of cool. It just wasn't, I mean, it seems like a lot of space to dedicate to, um, to that. Oh, it's a horrible ride. Um, the whole system's bad. It's, I mean, it's dated. It's, it opened the system opened with the park. They haven't really updated much of it. And it's all the cars are in one room with a big movie screen. It's, it's okay as a, as a storytelling, but it's going to jar you. It sucks. I haven't ridden it. It's been a long time. I think Transformers opened last time I wrote it. That's another one, man. That's, that's a great ride, but I just wish it was something else. 
It is something else. It's Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. The, the whole track layout is Spider Man, yeah, and the same, whole same it's all, um, <laughs> every every point in the story is exactly what happens when you get electrocuted in Spider Man is when you get electrocuted in Transformers. So it's the same thing. Um, I don't ride it unless I'm just staying at USO. Um, I'll go ride Spider Man before I do that. Spider Man's fun. I do enjoy Spider Man. That's a, I yeah. mean, that um, I, I wish that that whole that whole section too got a little TLC. They're working on it. Um, they've had HHN last year, and a few trips I've been stuff's been sanctioned off, and um, they've taken down a lot of the big uh, standees with the characters and repainted them and everything. So it's it's getting its its, it's care, and that goes back to the contract. Uh, Disney actually has control over it. It's like if they come in and say, "Hey, you're not keeping up with your property," then yeah. we can take it from you. So they're going to put the money back into it. That's why the whole got retracted a few years ago. That ride, I, I know this is probably very unpopular. I love the Hulk. No, I, I like it. it. I love it. I, I love it now. Road nowadays, but, coaster, you know, I'd rather ride that. But I think the Hulk was my one of my first big time roller coasters that I ever rode, and. I just the launch is just awesome. I just love that. After that, I'm ready to get off, but the launch is cool. <laughs> just yeah, love that, it. Per, that first half of the ride is amazing. It's vice versa awesome. of, of Velocicoaster. I like the second half of Velocicoaster more than the first. Um, just because I'm more of a speed and upside down type person than I am a like close enclosed topsy turvy type thing. Um, but that saying, I do like the front part of the Hulk where it is topsy turvy you know you get that speed yeah. and you're upside down three times yeah. before you go under the bridge that's what made me nervous about um velocicoaster man is see i'm i'm six three two eighty and i sat down and i'm like where's the rest of the where's the rest of the stuff guys like what <laughs> this, this is it this is what's gonna hold me in and when we go over the water man and it dumps you i feel like it takes like 10 seconds before you put back up right and um, i can feel my whole big ass body just <laughs> it's it's my favorite part. The Mosasaurus oh, is my favorite part. Like top uh, hat and the Mosasaurus. So yeah, and you got uh, the entire time. And you got you go, you go front row every time. I uh, I've only ridden uh, non front row. I want to say two or three times out of all my. Have time. you been all the way in the back yet? No, mm-hmm. I am front row stand on every coaster if I can. So, Besides so three guts. You won't you won't go back row just to send it one time and see what it's like. No, I'm a back row guy. I will I will fight for front row. Fight for front row. Okay, okay. I'm a I'll, I'll fight like for feel, front row. Feeling I'm glad like you exist, and so you take up. You know, it all spreads out. Yeah. You know, because Every- I'm. No, the view, man. I mean, I, I like riding front row for the view. I just feel like for a lot of the going over the hills and stuff, it, I just love that. Oh, for sure, you're getting pulled when you're in the back. I mean, you're going to get more speed than you will on front. But um, the view must be just, awesome. It's, it's a fun, fun someone's, coaster sitting front row. Someone's big bald head in front of you. That you have to look around. <laughs> Which everybody I've gotten on the coaster with me, both from the agency and, and, and my fr- uh, friend group, they all come back saying the same thing. It's a, original, it's a religious experience sitting front row. So It is nice. I've, I was, I've, I've rode front. For Velocicoaster once and probably six times in the back and then once in the middle. The middle was absolutely terrible. My brother I, I wanted middle. to ride right in the middle because he feels like that's where he's safest. Like, bro, if something happens, it doesn't matter where you're sitting. Yeah, you're all going to go in the water. <laughs> this thing's going a million miles an hour, man. We're all cooked. Um, so which which uh, land are you most pumped for for Epic Universe? I'm probably going to go with um, Dark Universe. Dark Marvel. Universe? Um, I think it, I think all of them are going to be awesome. In fact, I know that um, Super Super Mario is going to be great. I've been to it's gonna be uh, Hollywood and saw you know their miniature ver- version of it. So it's it's just going to be amazing. But huge Mario fan too, man. Well, our age group. I mean, that's what was yeah. That's what we were all playing, man. Yeah, you know, for sure. They know um, who's paying for these tickets. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, and the fact that they're bringing them up to um, still do the newer characters, like the newer looks of the characters, is great. 
uh, and with the movies that, you know, they just, they greenlit the second movie right after the first one. So they know these young kids are going to get into it. So this line's going to be there for a while and we're getting the Donkey Kong expansion for it. Donkey uh, Kong. But, yeah. Um, you know, they just delayed it in Japan. They're supposed to have it first. I think they might end up opening close to about the same time. Something about Dark Universe. I mean, I might have to wait till night to go to it because the rumors of like the the flaming uh, windmill bar is going to be awesome. But I don't want to go during the day to see it on fire. I want to see it at night. Yeah, you want to see it at night, especially for the first time. I just have to wait. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it's the I think it's a Frankenstein or maybe it's a Dracula retraction. It's a Dracula attraction uh, that's going to be on a Kuka arm. I'm looking forward to it. But I'm looking more forward to the uh, werewolf roller coaster. You know, each one of these lands is going to have its own coaster type. Besides, uh, Harry Potter. That's so crazy. So I'm going to. I'm just going to sit back and relax. But uh, you'll probably find me the first opening night or AP previews in Dark Universe at the bar um, because that's going to be the coolest looking place in the park. Yeah. No. I'm. I'm definitely there too, man. I'm a big bar guy. Like Finnegan's, that's where I start my trip at. No, we always uh, do uh, Che Alcatraz to get the ocean attack, or I end up going into Diagon Alley and getting a butterbeer. And I do not put a fire whiskey in my butterbeer every time I go. <laughs> so we write for, that down for legal reasons. <laughs> I do not do that. <laughs> Oh man, that sounds good though. I never had that before. If you do, don't want, let, don't let a team member see you. You can get. Like, this guy told me, man. This is his name. <laughs> um, you you will get removed from the park. It's, oh, it's sure. a violation of their. Uh, That's my next. Audience, video. So, I have that video in the works now. It's on my list to make um a Disney or Universal version of top ten things. Not that that'll get you kicked out of the park. Uh, filming backstage is number one on all of them. My brother and I got stuck on um, Expedition Everest, and we were at the top, and we had to walk down the entire thing. My brother recorded the entire thing. He put the phone in his pocket with the lens sticking out, and I have the entire video. It's like 30 minutes, oh, wow. and uh, he's like, dude, you should post that. I'm like, I don't want to post that. I want yeah. to. I want to, but no, man, I get all these people in here 16 dummy accounts just to even think about it and then <laughs> disney will still find out it was me it is so cool in there though oh my god inside that mountain's crazy way crazier than i thought it'd be oh yeah everything's just gigantic everything's huge um but i i think dark universe is gonna be sick yeah uh and the the rumor is the first expansion for it is going to be a uh, creature a boat ride. So I'm in, I'm in for that. I'm, I'm cool for that. Uh, and, uh, a boat ride, ride in general, I love. Uh, nice little buzz and then ride the boat ride. Yeah. yeah. So that whole that whole land should be just amazing from the get go. If they treat it like they treat uh, Diagon Alley or uh, Hogsmeade during HHN, where the dement- uh, the the, de- the Death Eaters walk around you just let you know frankenstein dracula and all those guys walk around I, i'm all game for it i have this video from uh hhn and it was the guy on still it's just a giant demon guy and he's got his arm all the way down he's walking this this little girl also an actor and they're just walking down the street to go backstage and they're just like holding hands and it's the the, the street was, was towards the end of the night the street was really empty and it's one like little light and it's the creepiest video I think I've ever recorded. Every time I watched, I'm like, this is so weird. <laughs> so <laughs> creepy, man. But that's what I love about it. We can't oh, yeah. wait. We booked our, our room for uh we're going in October. So I've got my September trip booked and I'm working on booking my October trip. So we're actually fixing this extend our stay for September. The guy I was talking to today, he's wanting to go for an extra night so we're gonna do three nights of hhn in september and two in october you sure you want to stay an extra night man i would (laughs) tell the wife i said we can move down there for september and october and i'll be fine go to work and then go straight to hhn for the night do you fly down or do you drive Drive. it's a six and a half hour drive for us so 
it's either way, if I fly, I got to fly to Cal, uh, either Montgomery, or yeah. Montgomery, which is like a six hour flight because layovers and whatnot, or drive to Atlanta for a direct flight. And then by then you've spent six hours in an airport. So I'd rather just spend six hours in a car. You, I mean, you're not much further from Orlando than I am. Yeah. I'm in Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach. So the entrance, this is what I, I thought was cool, man, was that the entrance is supposed to be like this giant um, pipe, right, for uh, Nintendo World? Oh, for Nintendo, yeah. They're all, all the entrances are going to be portals of some sort. That's so cool. they're all going to have that, that look of walking through a pipe. Hmm. Um, but it's the green pipe, for, um, which is the same way at the, at, uh, in Japan and in um, California. Yeah. Which it, no. it's it's crazy. You walk into it, you're hearing the uh not the N sixty four version music. And you walk into Princess Peach's castle. Uh if you remember the gallery from the N sixty four, you see some of those portraits around there. Um so it's gonna be about the same way. I think though we get to take a escalator on ours because we're going upstairs and then we come back down into the land. America. Yeah. <laughs> That's money. But I, I want to say Japan's the same way. Like you, when you go in, you go up, and then you get the whole look view of the land, and then you come back down. California just didn't have the the space for it, so and I it's think, great because it's still so small, but it's still amazingly beautiful in there. This is what's gonna put push me to take a Universal Studios only trip one year, which is going to be like the first time I've never gone to Florida just to go to Universal, and. This may be, I mean, I don't know. It depends on how long it takes to get through everything, how much money it costs, because also cost-wise, you know, can you swing going to Disney and Universal at the same time now? I mean, that yes. whole buy two days, get one three. You know, buy two days, get three days, you know, get your third day free. The deal they had going on for a long time was what got us by with spending so much money in Disney, because we definitely spent more money in Disney World than we did Universal. But you got to remember with Universal, they look, they know that where they're at. They know their price point. Um, when Cabana Bay opened over 10 years ago, um, oh, maybe 15 years ago. It's been there a while. Uh, it opened the same year Art of Animation opened. Um, and it's it, it's dated. You can tell it needs its help. Um, we actually mentioned it to, in the training. It's like, hey, are they ever going to kind of <laughs> get this place looking a little bit better? And they told us, yes, it's the next, like, Hard Rock's getting a soft refurb. Cabana Bay's getting hard. So it's coming down the road. It's uh, it's just taking a little bit of time. But when it opened, the price point has been the same ever since. So that $160, wow. $170 that you were paying back then is the same price you're paying today versus you know when Art of Animation opened, you're paying $200 and now you're paying $500 for a family suite. So you got Epic, uh, the Endless Summer Resorts just down the road, paying ninety nine dollars a night on the cheapest nights, uh, one hundred nineteen dollars for a family suite on the cheapest nights. You can't beat that at Disney. Right? You're staying in a tent. You were literally staying in a tent and paying more for that lot at Disney World than you are to stay in a fairly decent hotel at Universal. So they know their price points. They know that people want to spend more money in the parks than where they're staying. And when you look at what they're offering on the deluxe side of stuff with Hard Rock, Portofino, and Pacific, getting the ultimate unlimited express pass just to get into rides that you don't have to make reservations for. I mean, Universal knows what they're doing. They know how to attack Disney. They've been doing it well for the past five ever. years. Yeah. Um, ever since Hogsmeade opened, they've been going at the throat of Disney. And you can see it now. Days that I'm in both the Disney annual pass groups and the Universal annual pass groups, and they'll be posting in Universal groups one day of how crowded the park's in, and then the the next post down is a picture of Main Street USA and Magic Kingdom, and there's 40 people on it, and it's like it's because it costs you two hundred dollars per person to get into the park that day, not including your Genie Plus and your ILLs and any food that you want, versus paying one hundred and twenty dollars per person to get into universal. So going to universals in the long run is going to be cheaper for people, especially when as, as, as travel agents, we're sitting there looking at this stuff and saying, Hey, 
you might be able to get free dining at Disney, but the food's great. Like, I think the food at Universal is better in some cases and cheaper. It, it, so. it depends. Like, I, I like how Universal's food, there's less cheap food. I don't mean cheap as cost wise, I just mean like value wise. Like, there's less, yeah. there's less cheap food there where Disney, man, you have to really be careful where you eat. When they took away Peso Bill's barbecue sandwich, that was my last hope <laughs> at Magic Kingdom food. That barbecue sandwich was awesome. And now everything in Magic Kingdom is terrible to me personally. I can't eat in Magic Kingdom. I'm not going to make a reservation for lunch. Yeah. I want to go buy somewhere, give a $20 bill and eat something good. It's kind of <laughs> funny though because you go to, we talked about Simpsons in the land. Um, you go over there and you start eating um, at a Krusty Burger. A Krusty bor- Burger is horrible, but they're theming it because in the show, evidently yeah. Krusty Burgers are bad. They suck. So <laughs> they've themed it to be bad. Yeah. And people still buy it because they want There's a Krusty people Burger. People pay for it. They take I a picture. Yeah, that's the burger I go to when I want a burger in uh, Universal. The um, the travel agent thing was was a good point because when people contact us and want to book Disney, we actually get pretty pumped about it because it's so freaking expensive. Yeah, like it's just it's like, man. I mean, I, I feel like Universal stood by and watched every complaint and went, "Let's just do the opposite of what people are complaining about." And Universal's doing it not just on a on a customer base. They're doing it all the way up through. They've seen what the team members are complaining about or the cast members at Disney, and they're implementing something different at Universal for their team members. So they're they're doing more, and they're doing much better at it. Um, they're listening to the customers at the end because, yeah, they wanted another park. So what they do, they go bought land for another park, land that was originally theirs back in the day. Um, and they're like, hey, we're going to build three more hotels. We have Latin for expansion and we've been this massive theme park. And because we're just going to do it, we're going to throw fireworks into this thing when there's a missile plant right there next to us. So wind blows the wrong way. I don't know what they have in contact with uh, a fireworks fireworks show. That, that might be a really big firework show on our drive that night. So <laughs> that's going to be sick. Um, isn't so Epic universe is the last, last point we'll, we'll make them. We'll wrap up. How far away is this plot from the Universal and Islands of Adventure? Uh, they told us it was like five to ten minute drive uh, okay. from where it is now, so I would say it's probably about two or three miles. So uh, we're talking uh, a totally separate. Yeah, it's totally separate park. Where I do like the, I do like the convenience of Islands of Adventure Universal combo deal, being able to just walk back and forth. That's pretty cool. Um, so this is going to be basically you're going to go here, spend all day here. Right. You're not going to go anywhere else. And that's what um, the the rumor mill has been for a lot of the the universal people is that even with this opening next year, like annual passes won't get access to it with their annual pass for another couple of years. They won't put a four park annual pass out there that includes this because right now they sell a two park three and a three park to include Volcano Bay. Um, and then if you buy a package that there probably won't be a park hopper that includes the three parks as we see it. For, yeah, for Epic Universe, while. IOA, and that you'd have to buy a separate ticket completely for it, and that would spend your whole day. Um, and then when you get there, you know, it's, it's being built, like I said, right next to Lockheed, but that's also close to the uh, Orange County Convention Center. So you might end up showing up with a one night, and there's Super Mario might be bought out by some co- corporation for a night event. And that's the way they, the reason they did portals is so they can close off a land and let people into that land uh, without any, with, with keeping the rest of the park open. So I think it was smart. I mean, a lot of people are going to go and say, okay, we're going to buy out Super Mario for the night and just enjoy it for our company. I think that uh, Denise, Denise watching this, we want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Hook it up. Yeah. So, you know, just, <laughs> Next agent training, we want to do a special night at Super Nintendo. Or, you know. Any of them, fine. I mean, you can go with the yeah. everyone's cheapest for us. Dark Universe, I'm not going to complain about. I think part of the training should be to taste the food and drinks. It's it's, it's how we can recommend it, really, Yeah. to our, to our clients, is if you have to taste the stuff and drink the stuff. So and That's why I go so many times a year. <laughs> I don't need to 
taste <laughs> food food taste changes. So you yeah, know, yeah. New chefs that's, come and go. New cooks. That's a business expense, no? Right. That is. <laughs> that's what my tax person tells me. <laughs> I keep all my receipts for my food and drinks. Heck yeah, man. Well, Jason, I appreciate the um, the conversation, man. I definitely had a good time. Learned some stuff. Yeah, had some fun. Great. Now I'm all excited about something that's not going to open for another little while. It was about eight months. Eight months. months. Yeah, rumor rumor has it, it was originally <laughs> summer, and they're they're moving. Like if you look at Bio Reconstruct on Twitter and his pictures, he's he's moving along. They're moving along real fast. There's a lot of greenery put into like how you're turning Dragon and uh, Dark Universe and whatnot. So yeah, that's that's um, what I'm really impressed about is the time. I mean, I keep following these guys on YouTube and every three days they're posting another update yeah to the construction i'm like my god man, these guys aren't playing man and somebody just posted that uh the the coaster in how to train your dragon just started its test runs so you know they don't run those things for a year before they open a park no they're ready to go eight or nine i mean eight or nine months but and that's all yeah. the, the high end of things That's not a land I'm too, I guess, pumped about. I never really got into the how to train your dragon. I think I missed that train. But um, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll ride the roller coaster and try the food. I'm going to watch the watch it. Um, you know, Travis, like I said, three years old, so he should be. Oh able yeah, to no, you're... get into it fine. And I want to sure. watch it, make sure I know what I'm I'm getting myself into. Yeah, yeah. And then the meat hall and meat hall, whatever they call it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no earthly idea about anything there about the dragon's names or anything. No, uh, but it looks like it's going to be a cool, cool land. I'm excited for it. Nonetheless, it's I'm excited my, for all of it. Yeah. It's my least popular, my least anticipated. It won't be the one I run to. All right. Well, I guess we will, um, if you ever want to come back on, man, you're obviously more than welcome to, I, I had a blast up you did too. And, uh, I had a great time. Awesome. Well, now we count down our days until we go to Horror Nights. Well, I've got a I've got a Disneyland trip in June, so I'm counting oh, that Disneyland? down. Disneyland, yeah. man. All right, all right. I don't know if I'm going to do uh, studios mm-hmm. out there, Universal Studios yet or not, but I, I know I'm doing Disneyland, so that's my first countdown, and then HHN after that. But nonetheless, I'm still excited for HHN, and I, I back in my mind counting it down. All right, man. We'll have fun. I'm gonna try. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. And then we will catch you on the next one.